What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. So the Lions team has finally been announced. It feels like so long since I've actually got to sit down and do some rugby videos. I've been doing a lot of gaming recently, been waiting for the rugby news to come in. So of course we sort of announced the other day that Alan Wynn was going to be captain. We sort of heard about that. He had to appear on the show in that very awkward sort of green screen 3D imaging thing. Not really a big fan of that sort of thing, but that seems to be where sport's beginning to move now. But the announcement was fun. There's a lot of people named in this team that I think were quite surprising. Definitely not what I expected to see. So what we'll do is we'll go through the team, give a bit of reaction who we thought. Uh, so first to start off, there was 37 men named rather than 36. Gatlin said he made a decision yesterday to add in one more person. Of course, we've had some people drop out along the way. People like George North went out with his ACL injury in the first round of the Rainbow Cup. And I believe Ben Young's also pulled out due to family matters. So a couple of things have changed. Some people getting a little bit lucky to maybe get in here. So starting off with the forwards, to start off with the loose head. So Wynn Jones, as I think a lot of people expected to get in. Mako Vunapola also in there. One that I was not expecting, Rory Sutherland, who didn't play badly at all in the Six Nations. Thought he did very well for Scotland, but not someone I had down as an immediate person to go on this list. So very well done to him. Wasn't expecting that. Moving on to the hookers. Ken Owens, of course, I, I had no negatives about through his whole Six Nations. He's a leader from the front. We know his links with uh, Gatlin, so he was definitely going to do okay. Cowan Dickey, also sort of who I expected to get in there. And Jamie George, who, a bit surprising, again, uh, wasn't expecting him to get in there. I did think George Turner played very well. Don't know if there's been any injuries along the way. I haven't been able to keep up today with my club rugby. It's shocking. I hate it so much, but I wish I could keep up more today. Jamie George not having the best Six Nations. Surprising to see him in there. Maybe he's done very well at English club level rugby to get in there. See, already beginning with the mess up vocals here. Uh, moving on to the tight head. Tyg Furlong, of course, was going to be in there. Everyone really had him nailed down from his Six Nations. But a couple of surprising ones here. Andrew Porter. I don't think a lot of people would have picked him. He was in my team of the tour for the Autumn Nations Cup. Thought he had very well back then. Six Nations wasn't as impressive. A lot of penalties when we did get to see him and we didn't really get to see a lot of him mainly because Ty Furlong was doing so well. So Andrew Porter again a little bit lucky there maybe to get in. And then finally Xander Fagerson. That'll be the one I think will surprise a lot of people mainly because of the lack of time he had in that Scotland team due to his red card against Wales. Um, I don't think it's a bad pick. Xander Fagerson played very well in that France game at the end of the Six Nations and we know what he can do when he's not red carded and is actually allowed to play so I don't think necessarily a bad decision not who we were expecting I think Kyle Sinclair uh, might feel a little bit hard done by there but again unfortunately because of how quickly this has all happened today I haven't had time to look up <laughs> injury statuses of people and uh, so people might be out through injury so if you know something that I don't mention in the video feel free to drop it down in the comments it's a learning experience that's why we're all on the channel moving on to the locks of course we have Alan Wynn Jones got named as the captain he's always going to be in there we all sort of thought that was the way he was going to go uh, the second favourite I believe in like betting circumstances was going to be a Toji to get in as the captain he is in the team but not as the captain. I think Alan Wynn Jones is probably the right call there. He is sort of the historic legend in the making, really. So many things other players wish they could achieve with their careers. He has done. I think it's a good pick. Uh, I told you, of course, in there. Johnny Hill uh, really surprised me for this one. Um, didn't have the best Six Nations. Didn't play appalling by any means, but uh, definitely not the best. Um, I would have liked to have seen a couple more bits from him. Surprised to see him and not maybe James Ryan in this list. Again, maybe injury circumstances. Maybe some of the Scottish contingency could have got in here. Johnny Hill was a surprising one for me. Along with Courtney Laws, um, who we know is a good player. Um, but again, just game time. Game time, haven't seen him in that international shirt. Whether he's going to deal with the pressure that South African teams are going to bring. Surprised to see Courtney Laws. I've added him in, in the locks because he tends to play lock in uh, the English international side. But of course, he can play back. Uh, we haven't got to know what sort of position they want to play. I've sort of had to fit them in and around <laughs> how I think they would line up. And finally, Ian Henderson, who I think deserves to be in there. I think he had a really good Six Nations, topping the board in so many areas for stats. Got a lot of things to prove behind him. Think he plays well. Play Can play four or five. So, again, test level coming up, maybe. Not a lot of people there can play five necessarily maybe if Alan Wynn wasn't going to be in a game Ian Henderson can step in there as a follow-up captain maybe as well I don't think that's a bad pick moving on to the back row here so Tyburn, obviously we all expected Tyburn to be in there 
were sort of odds on favourites. I think he was my player of the tournament for the Six Nations. I um, think he's absolutely superb and still playing well at club level. We saw him in that first round of the Rainbow Cup, still doing really good work, had to be in there. He was the first name down in the forwards list in the actual presentation. I'm not surprised if he was the first name on the team sheet. Uh, a name I wasn't expecting to see, Jack Conan. Um, bit of a moot thought on this. I wasn't really expecting this. Didn't have a lot of positive thoughts about Jack Conan, but at the same time, no negative thoughts. Just didn't even cross my mind when I was considering Lions team picks. Um, that's maybe why Gatland is in charge of the Lions, and I am not, and I'm sat here at my desk. Uh, so maybe a good pick there. It'd be interesting to see how he gets on, actually, in this uh, in this Lions team. Nice to see him make that little step up. I mean, there's a couple of other people from that Irish contingency could have got in there. I mean, Will Connors had a good Six Nations. Would have liked to maybe seen him in there. But Jack Conan, good luck to him. Uh, Hamish Watson, of course, I thought was going to get in. So many people seem to believe he wasn't going to get in. Gatlin wasn't going to pick Scottish players. Would really have surprised me if Hamish Watson hadn't got in there. Great Six Nations. Player of the tournament officially was Hamish Watson. Think he had a great Six Nations. So, yeah, Hamish Watson was always going to be in there. Uh, from the Welsh contingency, Justin Tipperick and Faletau again, two we sort of expected to get in there. Faletau mainly. Uh, the main key number eight in here. Uh, I think he was always going to get in. No Billy Vunapola in this back row list. I don't think anyone's going to be too surprised by that. A couple of people might be surprised by CJ Stander. I didn't have CJ Stander picked because of his whole retirement thing. Didn't know if he was even going to be allowed to go. Um, so no CJ Stander in this list either. And finally from England, Tom Curry. One of the few players in that England team throughout the Six Nations I thought actually played well. Um, there's a lot of England names in here that I was quite surprised at more as we move towards the backs we could say and well, a couple of the locks that I wasn't expecting but Tom Curry I think deserved to be in there one name that will take a lot of people by surprise Sam Simmons uh, not a player we get to see a great deal of caps on an international level but at club level is performing really really well if you go and look up a Sam Simmons highlight reel uh, it is quite extraordinary and uh, as a Wales supporter quite glad he's not in the England rugby team because currently I reckon he is so much better than Billy Vunapola maybe in England could have had a better Six Nations had Sam Simmons made that team. So be interested to see how he gets on. But good luck to him in the Lions team. On to the backs. Uh, three scrum halves. Scrum halves were big calls here. Ben Young's, of course, dropping out. I think maybe someone could have got a little bit lucky in here. Connor Murray was my pick and who I thought was going to get in the Lions. Did manage to get in. Gareth Davis getting in there, which was a surprise to me. We knew he'd probably want a Welsh scrum half in there. To me... Thomas Williams could have got in there. I believe Kieran Hardy is back from injury. And you know what? Kieran Hardy had an all right Six Nations. I think I might have gone down that route. Gareth Davis, although we know Gatlin loves Gareth Davis, loves putting him in that team, especially when you've got bigger on the outside of him. I would have liked to have seen maybe a different Welsh player in here. Gareth Davis, for me, not having the best Six Nations. The grubber kick against Ireland, just a nothing that almost lost them the game. There was a couple of big decisions he made in games. The box kicking wasn't the best from him. Charge downs coming against people like Atoje. I think that could be a bit of a, a, a chink in the armour there, but we'll see how he gets on. Ali Price making his way in. I didn't think Ali Price was going to get in. Uh, I don't know if this is because maybe Ben Young's dropped out. They had that extra bit of room. I think Ali Price is a class player and deserves to be in, but I just thought other scrum halves were getting ahead of him. Other scrum halves dropping back out of it. Gives Ali Price the room to get in. Maybe he was in on merit. Unfortunately, we never know what order <laughs> people were named on the team sheet in. But of course, Ali Price will do well when he goes over to South Africa. So best of luck to him. Uh, moving into the fly halves. Uh, I've added Owen Farrell into the fly halves because he's sort of fly half centre. I don't really know where they would place him. But Owen Farrell's going to be in there. A couple of people not expecting to see him. But I just think... The ability to move in between centre and fly half, as well as a captain leadership role, I think he would have to be in there. I think it would be surprising if he wasn't. Uh, Dan Bigger going to get in there, of course. Great Six Nations from him, especially towards the end. A little bit weak to start off with, first two games of the Six Nations, not where you'd want to see him, but especially towards the end, really, really working well. And the surprise name for me here, Finn Russell, really thought Sexton was going to take this one. Finn Russell, again, Scottish coaches in there. I didn't think Gatlin would like him because of the wild card element, but maybe that's why he's been picked. Maybe just that extra bit of spice in that fly half position. Maybe it can make up. Be interesting to see how Finn Russell gets on. Uh, moving on, let's go on to the wingers. Let's start off with people who are wingers. Um, again, I've had to sort of categorise the back row or the back three down into sort of wingers and fullbacks. So in the wingers, Josh Adams, who I thought was going to sneak in. A couple of people disagreed, said Josh Adams will never get in that team. No, I, I thought he would. Gatlin likes Josh Adams and he hasn't played terrible regular defensive game has stepped up the attacking game has been good just that bit of finishing I want to see from him getting the end there Reese Zamet makes it into the team very glad to see him in the team um, youth getting in there I don't think he'll start actually 
I think we could see either Anthony Watson or Duan van der Merve, also named to the team, getting in there, potentially over him. I think he might be brought in as a sub when other players are tired and just let speed take over. Going to be interesting to see how he gets on. Anthony Watson, a lot of people calling for Anthony Watson. I did think maybe Keith Earls would get over uh, Anthony Watson in there, but he had, has a good Six Nations. So Anthony Watson going to get in there, but I don't think that's a terrible call. And finally, of course, van der Merve. A lot of people expecting him not to get in. I think the stats behind him, we're going to push for him there to be in that team. Again, size and sort of monstrosity that he is at smashing through people. I think going to South Africa, people like Colby, you just got to clam him. I think it's got to get him in there. I think it's a good pick. Just defensive work will be the thing. Can the coaching staff up his defensive game, really get him to sit in there, not missing tackles, don't let him take over. I think that's where his weakness is. If he can get over that, I think he's a great pick. Uh, on to the centres, only three centres. Again, Owen Farrell might be in here somewhere. Uh, Robbie Henshaw, the person we'd all expect, another player of the tournament name there, always going to get in here. Some big calls though, Bundy Aki. Oh, wow. I was really surprised at Bundy Aki. I mean, of course, no George North was going to be in there because of his injury. But, you know, I mean, Slade hasn't had a terrible Six Nations. Um, Ringrose not getting in there was a big surprise. Um, I didn't expect to see Jonathan Davis. A couple of people named Jonathan Davis, who I don't think is in any good form by any means at all. But Bundyaki, we really haven't got to see a lot from him. I think that's maybe more of an experience pick. You know what he does, especially when he just plays 12. You know what he's capable of. You know what he does. He's very set. Um, maybe that'll be someone you get to see more against in the warm-up games more than the official games against South Africa, but you know what he brings to the team. But of course, we only got to see him for a little bit in the Ireland team and then of course getting himself sent off as well. Um, so lucky for him to get in there. I think that'll be one of the big calls people weren't expecting. And finally, Chris Harris, someone I did think was going to make the team. That game against France really nailed it for me. I was never a massive Chris Harris sort of supporter. There's a couple of other Scottish centres really doing well. I have talked about his defensive work not being the best. But looking at how he played in that France game, shut me up, shut a lot of his critics up. So I don't think he's a bad pick at all. Again, Scottish coaches in there going to be pushing for them. So Chris Harris, fair play to him, going to make that. And finally, the big calls. Uh, so the full <laughs> I'm already going to start laughing. So, of course, the people we were going to nail on, Stuart Hogg, was always going to be in there. We, Of course, he was going to be in there. Um, the best fly half of the uh, the fullback of the tournament for me um you know maybe you could have said um Dulan could have got in there I think I might even pick Dulan over that as I say that a couple of people got quite annoyed actually I remember now um but out of the British contingency Stuart Hogg by far the best out of all of them uh Liam Williams gonna make that team as well did think he was gonna get there wouldn't have been in my team but I knew Gatlin was going to pick him. You've got your Josh Adams, Liam Williams, Rhys Zammett. You've got your Welsh three that just won the Six Nations. You're not going to stray too far away from there. But the big decision, which while watching it, I saw the live chat going on as the show was going on. Elliot Daly makes the team. Uh, I, I don't know why, in all honesty. No, you know, discredit or, you know, disrespect to Elliot Daly. But he has been very off form and not just like off form, but bad. Um, I would say maybe not single-handedly, but was definitely a crucial element in losing, especially the Wales game, but a couple of the games for England. They really didn't know where to put him. Um, Elliot Daly, for me, has not done brilliantly. Surprised to see him in. Don't know whether there's maybe a bit of politics in the background. Keep um, an English contingency up. Obviously, no English coaching staff involved with this British and Irish Lions team. Maybe they want to boost their... I, I do think there are potentially better people that could have slotted in there. But we'll see how Daly gets on. But that, for me, is the one big call I would probably disagree with across the board. But what do you guys think? Of course, you will have now seen the Lions team. I've probably had it all up here <laughs> as I'm talking in whatever order I've managed to do it in. So make sure you drop down in the comments your thoughts on the team. Who surprised you? Who are you absolutely nailed on? Is there anyone that you would really disagree with? Who would you swap out? Make sure you drop it down in the comments. I love the talking about it. Of course, we will now be looking forward to the actual game's kicking off, which aren't for like another month. It's so far away. So the first game they're going to have is going to be against Japan. That's going to be on the 26th of June. Um, so we're going to have to find some more rugby news to keep these videos coming. I love talking about the rugby. There's just there's nothing on in international rugby, which is such a shame. Uh, they're going to do the warm-up games throughout July. That's the 7th, 10th, 14th and 17th of July are going to be their warm-up games. And then the first game against South Africa will begin on the 24th. And then they'll have the second test on the 31st of July. 
and the final test on the 7th of August. We're into August, guys. What's happened? What's happened to this year already? It's absolutely ridiculous, but I'm really, really looking forward to watching this Lions tour go on. Hopefully, it'll be a good tour. Um, some real surprising picks in this team. Hopefully, some chinks in the armour that I disagree with don't end up being the weak links in the actual game. It's going to be interesting to see. Can't wait to see what the South African, South African team that gets announced is going to be. Really looking forward to that. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I love talking about the rugby. Looking forward so much to this being on. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.